a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Nigeria The Federal Republic of Nigeria, commonly referred to as Nigeria, is a federal republic in West Africa, bordering Benin in the west, Chad, and Cameroon in the east, and Niger in the north. Its coast in the south lies on the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean. It comprises 36 states, and the federal capital territory, where the capital, Abuja is located. Nigeria is officially a democratic secular country. Nigeria has been home to a number of kingdoms and tribal states over the millennia. The modern state originated from British colonial rule beginning in the 19th century, and took its present territorial shape with the merging of the Southern Nigeria Protectorate and Northern Nigeria Protectorate in 1914. The British set up administrative and legal structures whilst practicing indirect rule through traditional chiefdoms. Nigeria became a formally independent federation in 1960. It experienced a civil war from 1967 to 1970. It thereafter alternated between democratically elected civilian governments and military dictatorships until it achieved a stable democracy in 1999, with the 2011 presidential election considered the first to be reasonably free and fair. Nigeria is often referred to as the giant of Africa, owing to its large population and economy, with approximately million inhabitants. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and the seventh most populous country in the world. Nigeria has the third largest youth population in the world, after India and China, with more than 90 million of its population under age 18. The country is viewed as a multinational state as it is inhabited by over 500 ethnic groups, of which the three largest are the Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba. These ethnic groups speak over 500 different languages and are identified with a wide variety of cultures. The official language is English. Nigeria is divided roughly in half between Christians, who live mostly in the southern part of the country, and Muslims, who live mostly in the north. A minority of the population practice religions indigenous to Nigeria, such as those native to the Igbo and Yoruba ethnicities. Nigeria is the world's 20th largest economy, worth more than $500 billion and $1 trillion in terms of nominal GDP and purchasing power parity respectively. It overtook South Africa to become Africa's largest economy in 2014. The 2013 debt-to-GDP ratio was 11%. Nigeria is considered to be an emerging market by the World Bank. It has been identified as a regional power on the African continent a middle power in international affairs, and has also been identified as an emerging global power. Nigeria is a member of the MIMF group of countries, which are widely seen as the globe's next, brick-like, economies. It is also listed among the, next 11, economies set, to become among the biggest in the world. Nigeria is a founding member of the African Union and a member of many other international organizations, including the United Nations, the Commonwealth of Nations and OPEC. Etymology The name Nigeria was taken from the Niger River running through the country. This name was coined in the late 19th century by British journalist Flora Shaw, who later married Lord Lugard, a British colonial administrator. The origin of the name Niger, which originally applied only to the middle reaches of the Niger River, is uncertain. The word is likely an alteration of the Tureg name Ijeru and Niger Uen used by inhabitants along the middle reaches of the river around Timbuktu prior to 19th century European colonialism. Early, 500 BC 1500 The Nok civilization of northern Nigeria flourished between 500 BC and AD 200, producing life-size terracotta figures that are some of the earliest known sculptures in sub-Saharan Africa. Further north, the cities Kano and Katsina have a recorded history dating to around 999 AD. Hausa kingdoms and the Kanem Bornu Empire prospered as trade posts between North and West Africa. The kingdom of Venari of the Igbo people consolidated in the 10th century and continued until it lost its sovereignty to the British in 1911. Nri was ruled by the Ezenri, and the city of Nri is considered to be the foundation of Igbo culture. Nri and Aguilari, where the Igbo creation myth originates, were in the territory of the Amori clan. Members of the clan trace their lineages back to the patriarchal king Figuriri. In West Africa, 
The oldest bronzes made using the lost wax process were from Ibo Akwu, a city under NRI influence. The Yoruba kingdoms of Ife and Oyo in southwestern Nigeria became prominent in the 12th and 14th centuries, respectively. The oldest signs of human settlement at Ife's current site date back to the 9th century, and its material culture includes terracotta and bronze figures. Middle Ages, 1500-1800 Oyo, at its territorial zenith in the late 17th to early 18th centuries, extended its influence from western Nigeria to modern-day Togo. The Edo's Benin Empire is located in southwestern Nigeria. Benin's power lasted between the 15th and 19th centuries. Their dominance reached as far as the city of Igo and further. At the beginning of the 19th century, Usman Dan Fodio directed a successful jihad, and created and led the centralized Fulani Empire. The territory controlled by the resultant state included much of modern-day northern and central Nigeria. It lasted until the 1903 breakup of the empire into various European colonies. For centuries, various peoples in modern-day Nigeria traded overland with traders from North Africa. Cities in the area became regional centers in a broad network of trade routes that spanned Western, Central and Northern Africa. In the 16th century, Spanish and Portuguese explorers were the first Europeans to begin significant, direct trade with peoples of modern-day Nigeria, at the port they named Lagos and in Calibre. Europeans traded goods with peoples at the coast. Coastal trade with Europeans also marked the beginnings of the Atlantic slave trade. The port of Calibre on the historical Bight of Biafra became one of the largest slave trading posts in West Africa in the era of the transatlantic slave trade. Other major slaving ports in Nigeria were located in Badagri, Lagos on the Bight of Benin and on Bonny Island on the Bight of Biafra. The majority of those enslaved and taken to these ports were captured in raids and wars. Usually the captives were taken back to the conqueror's territory as forced labor. After time, they were sometimes acculturated and absorbed into the conqueror's society. A number of slave routes were established throughout Nigeria linking the hinterland areas with the major coastal ports. Some of the more prolific slave traders were linked with the Oyo Empire in the southwest, the Aro Confederacy in the southeast, and the Sokoto Caliphate in the north. Slavery also existed in the territories comprising modern-day Nigeria. Its scope was broadest towards the end of the 19th century. According to the Encyclopedia of African History, it is estimated that, by the 1890s the largest slave population of the world, about two million people, was concentrated in the territories of the Sokoto Caliphate. The use of slave labor was extensive, especially in agriculture. A changing legal imperative and economic imperative led most European powers to support widespread cultivation of agricultural products, such as the palm, for use in European industry. British Nigeria, 1800-1960 The slave trade was engaged in by European state and non-state actors such as Great Britain, the Netherlands, Portugal and private companies, as well as various African states and non-state actors. With rising anti-slavery sentiment at home and changing economic realities, Great Britain outlawed the international slave trade in 1807. Following the Napoleonic Wars, Great Britain established the West Africa Squadron in an attempt to halt the international traffic in slaves. It stopped ships of other nations that were leaving the African coast with slaves. The seized slaves were taken to Freetown a colony in West Africa originally established for the resettlement of freed slaves from Britain. Britain intervened in the Lagos kingship power struggle by bombarding Lagos in 1851, deposing the slave trade friendly Obakosoko, helping to install the amenable Obakotoi, and signing the treaty between Great Britain and Lagos on 1 January 1852. Britain annexed Lagos as a crown colony in August 1861 with the Lagos Treaty of Session. British missionaries expanded their operations, and traveled further inland. In 1864, Samuel Ajayi Crowther became the first African bishop of the Anglican Church. In 1885, British claims to a West African sphere of influence received recognition from other European nations at the Berlin Conference. The following year, it chartered the Royal Niger Company under the leadership of Sir George's Taubman Goldie. In 1900 the company's territory came under the control of the British government, which moved to consolidate its hold over the area of modern Nigeria. 
On 1 January 1901, Nigeria became a British protectorate, and part of the British Empire, the foremost world power. At the time, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries the independent kingdoms of what would become Nigeria fought a number of conflicts against the British Empire's efforts to expand its territory by war. The British conquered Benin in 1897, and, in the Anglo-Aro War, defeated other opponents. The restraint or conquest of these states opened up the Niger area to British rule. In 1914, the British formally united the Niger area as the colony and protectorate of Nigeria. Administratively, Nigeria remained divided into the northern and southern protectorates and Lagos colony. Inhabitants of the southern region sustained more interaction, economic and cultural, with the British and other Europeans owing to the coastal economy. Christian missions established Western educational institutions in the protectorates. Under Britain's policy of indirect rule and validation of Islamic tradition, the Crown did not encourage the operation of Christian missions in the northern, Islamic part of the country. Some children of the southern elite went to Great Britain to pursue higher education. By independence in 1960, regional differences in modern educational access were marked. The legacy, though less pronounced, continues to the present day. Imbalances between North and South were expressed in Nigeria's political life as well. For instance, Northern Nigeria did not outlaw slavery until 1936 whilst in other parts of Nigeria slavery was abolished soon after colonialism. Following World War II, in response to the growth of Nigerian nationalism and demands for independence, successive constitutions legislated by the British government moved Nigeria towards self-government on a representative and increasingly federal basis. By the middle of the 20th century, a great wave for independence was sweeping across Africa. Nigeria achieved independence in 1960. Independent Federation and First Republic 1960-1966. The Federation of Nigeria gained independence from the United Kingdom on the 1st of October 1960, while retaining the British monarch Elizabeth II as nominal head of state and Queen of Nigeria. Nigeria's government was a coalition of conservative parties, the Nigerian People's Congress a party dominated by northerners and those of the Islamic faith, and the Igbo and Christian-dominated National Council of Nigeria, and the Cameroons led by Namdi Azikiwe. Azikiwe replaced the colonial governor-general in November 1960. The opposition comprised the comparatively liberal action group, which was largely dominated by the Yoruba and led by Obafemi Awolowo. The cultural and political differences between Nigeria's dominant ethnic groups the Hausa, Igbo and Yoruba were sharp. An imbalance was created in the polity by the result of the 1961 plebiscite. Southern Cameroon opted to join the Republic of Cameroon while Northern Cameroons chose to remain in Nigeria. The northern part of the country was now far larger than the southern part. In 1963, the nation established a federal republic, with Azikiwe as its first president. When elections were held in 1965, the Nigerian National Democratic Party came to power in Nigeria's western region. Civil War 1967-1970 The disquilibrium and perceived corruption of the electoral and political process led, in 1966, to back-to-back -back military coups. The first coup was in January 1966 and was led by Igbo soldiers under Majors Emmanuel Life Ajinar and Chukwuma Kadun and Ziogwu. The coup plotters succeeded in murdering Prime Minister Abubakar Tafawa Bailwa, Premier Ahmadu Bello of the Northern Region, and Premier Lado Kakintola of the Western Region. But, the coup plotters struggled to form a central government. President Nforozu handed over government control to the army, then under the command of another repo officer, General Jtuagiyansai. Later, the counter coup of 1966, supported primarily by northern military officers, facilitated the rise of Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Ganda head of state. Tension rose between north and south. Igbos in northern cities suffered persecution and many fled to the eastern region. In May 1967, the eastern region declared independence as a state called the Republic of Biafra, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Emika Ojukwu. The Nigerian civil war began as the official Nigerian government side attacked Biafra on 6 July 1967 at Garkham. The 30-month war, 
with a long siege of Biafra and its isolation from trade and supplies, ended in January 1970. Estimates of the number of dead in the former eastern region are between 1 and 3 million people, from warfare, disease, and starvation. During the 30-month civil war, France, Egypt, the Soviet Union, Britain, Israel, and others were deeply involved in the civil war behind the scenes. Britain and the Soviet Union were the main military backers of the Nigerian government while France and others aided the Biafrans. Nigeria used Egyptian pilots for their air force. Military adjuncts, 1970-1999 During the oil boom of the 1970s, Nigeria joined OPEC and the huge oil revenues it was generating enriched the economy. Despite these revenues, the military government did little to improve the standard of living of the population, help small and medium businesses, or invest in infrastructure. As oil revenues fueled the rise of federal subsidies to states, the federal government became the center of political struggle and the threshold of power in the country. As oil production and revenue rose, the Nigerian government became increasingly dependent on oil revenues and on international commodity markets for budgetary and economic concerns. It did not develop alternate revenue sources in the economy for economic stability. That spelled doom to federalism in Nigeria. Beginning in 1979, Nigerians participated in a return to democracy when Oluseku Nobosanjo transferred power to the civilian regime of Shushagari. The Shagari government became viewed as corrupt by virtually all sectors of Nigerian society. In 1983 the inspectors of the state-owned Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation began to notice the slow poisoning of the waters of this country. The military coup of Muhammadu Buhari shortly after the regime's re-election in 1984 was generally viewed as a positive development. Buhari promised major reforms, but his government fared little better than its predecessor. His regime was overthrown by another military coup in 1985. The new head of state, Ibrahim Wabangdada, declared himself president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces and of the ruling Supreme Military Council. He set 1990 as the official deadline for a return to democratic governance. Beban Jida's tenure was marked by a flurry of political activity. He instituted the International Monetary Fund's Structural Adjustment Program to aid in the repayment of the country's crushing international debt. At the time most federal revenue was dedicated to servicing that debt. He enrolled Nigeria in the organization of the Islamic Conference, which aggravated religious tensions in the country. But Bangada survived an abortive coup, then postponed a promised return to democracy to 1992. Free and fair elections were finally held on 12 June 1993, the first since the military coup of 1983, with a presidential victory. For Mosud Kashimawola Wale Abiola of the Social Democratic Party, who gained some 58% of the votes, defeating Bashir Tofa of the National Republican Convention. However, Babangada annulled the elections, leading to massive civilian protests that effectively shut down the country for weeks. Babangade finally kept his promise to relinquish office to a civilian government, but not before appointing Ernest Shunkin head of an interim government. Baban Jida's regime has been considered the most corrupt and responsible for creating a culture of corruption in Nigeria. In late 1993 Shunkin's caretaker regime was overwhelmed by the military coup of General Sani Abaka, who used military force on a wide scale to suppress the continuing civilian unrest. He shifted money to offshore accounts in Western European banks and defeated coup plots by bribing army generals. In 1995 the government hanged environmentalist Ken Saro Wewe on trumped-up charges in the deaths of four Ogoni elders. Lawsuits under the American Alien Tort Statute against Royal Dutch Shell and Brian Anderson, the head of Shell's Nigerian operation, settled out of court with Shell continuing to deny liability. Several hundred million dollars in accounts traced to Abaka were discovered in 1999. The regime came to an end in 1998, when the dictator died in the villa. His successor, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, adopted a new constitution on 5 May 1999, which provided for multi-party elections. On 29 May 1999 Abubakar transferred power to the winner of the elections, Obasanjo, who had since retired from the military. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?